Welcome to Second Most Fishing. Uh, I'm Jared Wold, and today we're going to take on the Big Green River in Grant County, Wisconsin. Right now I'm going to be starting right at the junction of County Road T and County Road K, and I'm going to follow an arc that goes back to County Road K, so then I'll have a bit of a walk back. This whole stretch ends up butting up against the side of the of uh, the hillside over here. Has a really good riffle pool run stretches, and there's water along here that normally I wouldn't even fish on other streams, but there are generally so many trout in this river that you can catch stuff just about any place. I fished uh, the Sunday of the, the main trout season in May a couple years ago and had probably my best day trout fishing probably ever. This is the first time I'd actually fished Big Green and I'd always heard it was really good. And uh, it turns out it was pretty good, but apparently that was a banner weekend. I ended up hooking into at least about somewhere around 80 fish, landed probably about 50 of those, pretty much every other cast I had a fish on, and again landed the vast majority of those fish, so that was quite the productive day. Never had another day quite that productive here before, but this stream is pretty solid overall. I'm going to work my way downstream a little bit, there's a couple decent spots um, downstream of the bridge here, and then I'll work my way back upstream, find a good spot to get into the river that isn't too dangerous. You can see there's some greenery noting that Wisconsin spring creeks aren't going to really freeze even in the middle of winter. Now it's a little colder than it was forecast for today. I came to southwest Wisconsin because as opposed to fishing I was considering the McCann River today but it was going to supposed to be still below freezing. Right now the temperatures are just below freezing I'm not going to bother taking a subsurface temperature reading, which I normally would do, mainly just because I just want to get some fishing in, and if I catch nothing, then no big deal. Today I'm fishing, uh, keeping things simple, early season, I'm just fishing a, a number four Panther Martin spinner in uh, black body with gold spots, and gold blade which is my probably one of my favorite patterns I also like the silver blade with the yellow body and red spots that one works pretty well and this pool is a pretty deep pool right up ahead here the other challenge on a day like today is Dealing with a little wind, throwing my casts off to the side of where I want them to be. There's a fish. Day like today, temperatures are right around freezing, so goal is to handle the fish right in the water. It's about nine and a half inches right there. Get him back going right away.
usually on the big green most of what I see is oh, especially with a spinner this size that's about the smallest I'm likely to catch today I might catch something as small as like an 8 inch at some point but I generally find most of what I catch will be in the 10 to 12 inch range on a spinner this size biggest I've caught on big green so far is about a 15 inch fish All right, I'm coming to you today from what's known as the Fenimore Fork of the Blue River, locally called Castle Rock Creek. And actually you can see up ahead, the, the uh, little locality sign, this kind of collection of farms and a couple houses here is known as Castle Rock. Uh, just west of here is a bunch of uh, limestone quarries that actually, uh, when I was in college, uh, I took a paleontology class with a really great instructor, and in that class, we actually took a field trip. And I, as I was driving by the one of those quarries, I realized, oh, that's where I, we took that field trip to, basically to look for fossils and whatnot in the Wisconsin limestone. You've got lots of, uh, a lot of your early, uh, life from Wisconsin type lakes well of course most of the most of the north central US was big in the sea at one point so you get lots of essentially sea life mostly primitive crustaceans and stuff and trilobites and some of that kind of stuff that people probably have heard of so you get a lot of that around here so what we're fishing today is Castle Rock Creek, which um, unfortunately the section I'm at right here, right where you access, this is actually the beginning of the of a section that's a catch and release only section all year round. Of course, this is the early catch and release only season that's extended into January and February for the first time this year in Wisconsin. And I think the farmer that lives over here kind of created something that essentially dammed up this whole section of the stream because you can see it's deep and slow right here and right here we have one of the new cleaning stations that you see for uh, being able to cl clean your boots they've got a nice scrubber and brushes sometimes you'll see just these brushes attached to the to the public fishing or the regulations sign okay now Castle Rock Creek itself is looking a little green today, but when this stream gets blown out by a storm, it tends to be pretty chalky. I'm going to go ahead and throw some casts in this deeper stuff. Air temps have finally moved up above freezing. And the thing you'll note about this stream there's a lot of rocks and stuff in it big pieces of limestone so if you can get your casts around them when the lighting conditions are right sometimes it's really easy to spot to see some of that stuff we'll get a little further upstream and gradually this becomes a lot of pocket water and riffles and I've had times on this stream where I was throwing casts <clears throat> into riffles and had the fish hitting pretty much as the lure hit the water, which is pretty crazy. There's a nice fish. Oh, I lost him. <laughs> Looks like about a looks like about a 12 inch fish. I think that was a brown.
That was a case of, and certainly with trout, casting is all important. Probably nothing is more important than your cast. Whether it be using spinners or whether it be using a, a fly. That cast was right where I wanted it. That fish, I think, was right below the little tongue that was there. A little carve out, probably a couple feet deeper than the rest of the water right there. Either that or he popped out from where the where the rock was there. So browns generally won't chase much too far wide. Those rules are probably suspended a little bit in some of this pocket water. Kind of forgot that my normal technique of getting weeds off is just slap the water. You know, some people are all about stealth and so forth, and you know, I'm sure if you want to catch some really big trophy-sized trout, maybe stealth matters. You know, supposedly the trout can sense the vibrations from you walking in the water. But like in an area like this where you have a lot of noise, I really don't think it matters. It's never seemed to stop me from catching fish, and I'd rather not have to be super uh, super stealthy all right this is second most fishing with Jared Wold today I'm on Black Earth Creek in Western Dane County fishing fishing a stretch that's uh, kind of been improved a little bit It's a little deeper in through here, so it can be a little bit of a challenge to get a cast in as deep as you want it. Got a little spillway here. There's some improved water on the other side of the stream. I haven't been able to take a water temperature reading yet. Air temps are hovering right around freezing, about 32, 33. Just throwing a number four Panther Martin in black body, yellow spots, gold blade which is generally an all-around good color, it seems, in most conditions. In this stretch, sometimes a downstream retrieve can work okay. Just like that. <laughs> and in these temperatures, I want to Get the fish back in the water as quick as possible. It's a little about eight inch brown. And he really swallowed that sucker. So one drawback this time of year to fishing from shore, especially a section like this, that you're pretty much forced to bring the fish up out of the water. 
my goal is to get them back in as quickly as possible because water temps are a little on the low side for these guys this time of year. Now that little brown was very light colored. Caught a brown two days ago on, on a different stream in the state that was very golden in color. And there's about three different, to my understanding, there's about three different substrains that can be found in Wisconsin of brown trout. There's a nice fish. <sighs> Woo, look at that. That there is a pretty nice brown. That fish goes 20. Look at that bad boy. himself up. He had a lot of stuff on him. There he goes. Well, that's a heck of a start to the year to hook into something like that. I caught two, two browns that big last year. Still never gotten over 20 though, that was the, that's still tied for the biggest inland brown I've ever caught. We've caught bigger browns, lake run browns. Put up a pretty good fight too. Of course, if I'd had that on a uh, ultralight rig, that wouldn't have been anywhere near as. Or that would have been much more amusing fight there. But still, he put up a fight. I almost got him tangled up in my legs. It's the tricky part about fishing in these lower light conditions. Is all kinds of weird stuff can happen. Whew. Maybe there's more in this hole <laughs> like that. Apparently they're all bunched up right here. inches. Well, it's amazing to have caught another fish in the same hole where there's already such a ruckus. And these guys are really hitting this spinner hard. All right, let's see how many more we can. You'll notice I didn't bother with a net on that one. Generally speaking, I only bother with my net if I think it's a pretty big fish. 